host, welcome to Historia Spanana, History Reconnaissance. This is a documentary from 1965 showing the British Royal Air Force during the Aden Emergency, also known as the Red Fan Uprising, an armed insurgency against the British rule in the Crown Colony of Aden and the Aden Protectorate. This is a story told in a very, very British way, a snapshot in time from a slowly dissolving empire. In 1967, the British finally left and the People's Republic of Southern Yemen was founded. And please, like, share and subscribe. It means a lot to us. The beach here at Aden is lovely. The sand is warm and the sharks, unlike those in the market, are not always hungry. A dip before work? Certainly. But behind the strip of sand, Volcanoes, long extinct, have heaved the land, breaking it up and ringing the port with jagged, dangerous mountains. Not much happens here, just living is difficult. Every now and then you see villages which have died. Nature's cruelty isn't enough. Man joins in and promptly overacts. Federal Arab troops stand guard against the rebel tribesmen. And over this improbable land, a stream of daily commuters, servicemen of the RAF and army working together, fly inland to help the local forces. Casual as the conductor of a number nine bus, the crewman hangs his boots over 2,000 feet of air. This is his first run of the day. And with the mists not yet cleared, the land is at its most inviting. On the only road that leads up country, a convoy of army trucks is doing it the hard way. It's a short trip, 20 minutes by air. There's not much to see really when you get there. A lot of men watching a lot of mountains in a lot of sun. There's an effort to make life more civilized. Not too easy in a country where every shaving mug of water has to travel 50 miles. But the boys have a way of looking after themselves. At the base airfield, the Belvedere helicopters have roused themselves and are getting ready to start their daily routine. These craft do what they call the grocery run, spinning over the mountains up to the front five or six times a day, carrying anything from beef burgers to bulldozers. There has been trouble in these hills more or less since we first came here 130 years ago to build a coaling station for our new steamships. Treaties have been signed, but it goes on. As long as there's trouble, there must be troops. As long as there are troops, there must be supplies. The helicopters do a good job, but if the strips up front were bigger, they'd be saved a lot of journeys. Now, come on, you blokes, no marking about now. The old man wants to fly some big stuff in here, so just get on with it. In this heat, at this height, the air is thin, and the huge Beverly freighters need all the room they can get to heave themselves into the sky. So the airmen get their shirts off. Machinery often dropped in piece by piece by the choppers, copes with most of the hard work, but at 130 degrees in the sun, and there is no shade, even to blink makes your eyelids sweat. A man has stumbled and fallen, gashing his arm on the knife-edge rocks. It happens. But in these conditions, you don't delay with open wounds. 
you offer a prayer of thanks that he saved a long, tortuous ride down a mountain track. A whirlwind is detailed to take him back to base. Within 30 minutes, he'll be resting between crisp sheets in an air-conditioned ward. Doesn't look much like London Airport. It doesn't have to. A mountain has been moved a little to the right, and the runway is completed. A fully loaded Beverly lowers itself gingerly down. back doors open and she's unloaded. They're going to have chips with their sausages. The centre is going off duty, head back for a quick beer and a slow game of cards. But however much they relax, they don't forget that they're soldiers, fighting men. That's why they're here. From the air, the forward HQ looks like a canvas council estate. But there are reports that there's movement in the hills. What it is, who it is, no one quite knows yet. A Shackleton will reconnoitre the area. These planes can and do spend a day in the sky, but not today. This is to be a look-see. Over the sea, a sub-hunting shack may fly at zero feet. With solid waves like these, it keeps a more respectable height. There's evidence to make HQ realise that something is brewing and to consider whether a movement of artillery would be timely. Remember those films of the gallant 103rd manhandling their guns over the Khyber Pass and all those mules tumbling over the edge? Not so long ago, these boys would have got their guns up, taking a week or more. Now they take delivery in half an hour, an hour at the most. This land soaks up troops as quickly as it would water, should it ever rain. A battery of artillery might cover two valleys here, but with mobility, one gun becomes ten. Not all the aircraft are at the advanced strips. The hunters are kept at base, but what's 50 miles at 600 miles an hour? provided the aircraft is kept ready. These hunters are prepared for a strike, carefully. These rockets are not fragile, but they're not made to be dropped more than once. Behind the nose cone is a camera. A pilot can't indulge in a little harmless bragging in the mess. And there are also four cannons which need ammunition. If you fly at the speed of this plane, a check is never just routine. Up front, the rebels have come right up to the airfield. The RAF regiment is keeping them at bay. The 
hunters will streak across the sky and be where they're needed before the rebels can take up their position. One quick blow can save months of tracking and sniping. Target in sight. Now! guns take over from the expended hunters. At the camp, the old hands are saying there won't be any more trouble tonight. But there's no guarantee there never is out here. boy to a mountain army has finished its tasks for the day and heads back for civilization. Spelt C-O-O-L. goes on. The massive, unending job of protecting the protectorate. It's been a hard day's flight, and tomorrow will be another. But this is why they came here. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.